Hello and good morning. My name is Mivolin. And I'm Florence Yunim. And today we will be your lab demo for experiment number 7, which is the determination of surface tension using the ring method. Okay, so before we uh, go on to our experiment, the first thing that you need to know is the objective of the experiment. So if you look in your lab manual, it clearly states the objective. The objective is to determine the surface tension of the water. Okay, so let's leave this one aside. Before you begin any experiment as well, Knowing your objective, always get to know what are the apparatus and materials for this experiment. So first of all, you have this thing called your draining tube. So throughout the experiment, you'll be using your draining tube. Next, we have your measuring beaker. So your measuring beaker actually has a maximum up to 2000 milliliter. Okay, so the interval is every 400, 400, 800, 1200 and all the way up to 2000 milliliter. And then you have another one which is your smaller beaker, okay? Next, you have something called your thermocouple. So your thermocouple works exactly like a thermometer, okay? So it is attached to a magnetic stirrer where this one actually will display digitally what is the current reading of the temperature of your water, okay? Right, so now that you know all the basics of this thing, okay, uh, let's talk about what you're supposed to use in this experiment. This is called as the torsion dynamometer, which you'll be utilizing. This torsion dynamometer is actually measured in terms of force. However, the force will be very small amount. Therefore, it's given the unit in millinewton, which is exponent negative 3. So before we further move on to this experiment, I, I would um, like to invite Ms. Flo to further explain on the evaluation theory and all the tables for you to get a clear idea of it. Ms. Flo, if you do. On the result and tabulations of the data, we'll be doing three important things you need to know, which is the first one is the constant, which is the radius of the ring in cm, uh, and then the second one is the temperature, which is the manipulative variable, where the temperature is varies from, maybe for example, from 90 to 20 degrees Celsius, and then the responding is the force, where you record this from the torsion nanometer. And then, based on this result or tabulation of data, you will know the theory of this experiment is focusing on the force and temperature. So, as the force is increasing, the temperature is dropped. Or, as the temperature is increasing, the force is dropped. Means that, the force increasing also increasing the surface tension, which is, we see from the formula, the surface tension is equal to force over edge of the length, where the edge of the length is equal to 2 times 2 pi r, where 2 pi r is because of the ring of the measuring is 2 pi r, and 2 is the top and the bottom of this surface, of this measuring ring. Alright, thank you Ms. Flo. Okay, so now that I've gotten to know all the basic theory and the table that you're supposed to fill in, your responding, your manipulated and your constant, you can now begin on the experiment. Okay, so take your small beaker and place it on the magnetic stirrer. We will not be utilizing the magnetic stirrer, but we'll be using it for the temperature measurement. So now, this is an empty beaker. Let it be here. Take your heater and then for your heater, fill it up to a maximum of maximum 1.7 liter. Though it is suggestible that you don't exceed the maximum. Okay? So fill your water, go to your tap water here. Okay? So for this experiment, just assume that I already fulfill all the required conditions. Okay? So now once I have enough water, heat it up, up to 100 degrees Celsius. So now, this is a boiling water, okay? Assume that I, I've already boiled it. In the experiment, you are supposed to boil it, okay? Now, this is your measuring beaker. It measures up to 2,000 milliliter. However, for this experiment, you are supposed to fill in 400 milliliter only, okay? So, boiling temperature, pour it down all the way up to 400 ml, okay? So, look carefully that you manage to reach 400 ml, Okay, so once you've already gotten 400 ml of water, pour this one into your smaller beaker. Okay, so as you can see, now the ring is fully immersed inside. So, what's the next step? Take your draining tube, okay? So for your draining tube, make sure to fill in water from one end and another end, both sides. 
okay? So as you can see, the indication is that this one, there's water coming out. So this is say the tube is filled. So use your thumb, cover both sides, okay? Now, take one side and immerse it into this side. However, one side, make sure to cover it, all right? So the moment I release this one, okay, in the sink, then this floor will actually turn the torsion dynamo meter. However, before that, she must make sure it is balanced, okay? The pivot is at the back. So as you can see, it is already balanced. So now, with this thing immersed, the moment I release this one, Miss Flo will slowly turn the torsion dynamometer until the ring comes out. And this one will determine how much force is required to actually pull out the ring from the surface tension of the water. Miss Flo, if you look, if you please. In one, two, three. So now, if you look at the beaker, and it will slowly drain the water, and Miss Flo is turning the torsion dynamometer. So the water is reduced and as you can see the ring is slowly going up. Okay, this is not up yet. Make sure to keep turning. Okay, there you go. As you can see there was a certain jump there. So at this jump, what is the required force, Ms. Flo? 10.2 Okay, so what does this tell you? This actually tells you at 100 degrees Celsius of temperature, it requires 10.2 millinewton to actually pull up this ring from the surface tension of the water. Remember what Ms. Flo said just now, using the formula of surface tension where force per unit edge of the length, where edge of the length is equal to 2 times 2 pi r, where you understand that 2 pi r is the circumference of a circle. Why do you times it by 2 again? Is because there's the bottom and there's the top. Okay? And from there, you already finished your first result. However, there's 7 tables, I mean, sorry, 7 uh, columns for you to fill in. So, make sure to have different intervals of temperature. Just now, we started with 100, and then the next one would be your 90, 80, 70, and 60, and and so on. However, the interval of temperature is not something that you can really control. So try to make sure there is a significant drop to it. Take for example, 100, maybe the next one you want to put at, put at 80, the next one will be 75, it's still okay because there is a significant drop in temperature. Theoretically speaking, why is it that the force and the temperature is inversely proportional to one another? Think about it this way. If you have an ice cube, okay, and you have water, if I were to freeze this one into an ice cube and for you to pull it, will this thing actually go out of the ice cube? It will actually stay because the ice cube actually bonds this thing together. However, inside the water, actually the particle is still bonded together but not as close as it is inside of an ice. So actually, if you get it up, you're actually adding more heat. So more heat means to say more kinetic energy of the particle to break down your bond. So sooner or later, the surface tension will decrease. So therefore, you will get the result according to your theory and evaluation. So that is all for me and Ms. Floor. Yes. Thank you very much.